urban justice is the Steven Seagal mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world he's just here for the paycheck. Now leave him the f alone. It all starts off with Seagal's son getting wasted in a drive-by. Now it's the funeral, and because it takes place within a thousand feet of a school, Seagal is forced to stand all the way over here. But that's not important. What is important is she's single now. Afterwards, Seagal gives the most powerful and emotional performance of his career. Someone murdered Max. If you come by the house, I have copies of all the police reports they would release to me. Police say it was a random gang shooting. They may never know who did it. But shit happens. Now he's over it and needs to get a place. But nobody's seen any of his movies in like 10 years, so he has to settle for this piece of shit. Are you sure this is the kind of place you're looking for? From the worst real estate agent ever. This isn't the best neighborhood. In fact, it's getting worse by the week. Which I'm pretty sure is a dig at him, but he doesn't have time for that. How much is that, owe you? 125. Because he's required by law to notify his neighbors that he's moving in. That's when he's confronted by these concerned parents and fucking obliterates them like he's a rocket or some shit. <laughs> and sends them off with a message for the other parents. They're not safe. Do you understand me? Mom. Now he's trying to solve his son's murder. And while a picture of him is a pretty solid clue, he quickly realizes he has no f***ing idea what he's doing. So he goes to the police station, but they're just as incompetent as he is. The chances of finding your son's killer are slim to none. But Seagal doesn't do slim. So after rocking his f***ing world by prank calling him like an 11 year old. Hello? He goes back home where he finds this guy has broken in. What's up, man? Man, I, I came here looking for you, man, that's it. Seagal does spend a lot of time under his bed and in drawers. For real, man, I heard you was asking some questions, man. That's about it, man. And he did ask her some questions. Can I see the room? How much you say I owe you? So the story checks out. He tries to help Seagal solve his son's murder. I heard you was asking about on Max. But Seagal hates snitches. So you a snitch. So he tells him to go f himself. I really don't care, but you're a snitch. After kicking him out, Seagal goes to check out the area his son was killed, but sees an abandoned construction site and decides to check that out instead in hopes of scoring a nudie mag. But son of a bitch, there's just a shitty newspaper with the funnies removed before he can even process what kind of sick son of a bitch would do that. He's confronted by these guys. What the fuck's your bitch ass doing off in here? But defuses the situation by talking like this. You know what, man? Luck is a funny motherfucking thing. While they're trying to figure out what the f*** is happening, Seagal seizes on their confusion and starts murdering the sh out of them. <laughs> Thank you, man. Just his movies. Now he can really start having some fun the Seagal way. I'm gonna be doing the fucking now. Now we meet the movie's other villain, Eddie Griffin, who's like Seagal and murders people for no reason. I ain't like the way he smell. Only he's not as funny. Look at you now. Look at you now. Since Seagal pleasure killed his only leads, he tracks down the burglar from earlier to get some answers. But first, he stops to put on a front license plate. And while he doesn't want to be a snitch anymore, the raw pain and emotion in Seagal's voice I need you to help me find who killed my son is too much and he caves in. But it becomes obvious pretty quick that Seagal's not playing with a full deck. I don't care who ordered the hit. 
You should, but okay. What do you know? Nothing. He's Mexican. A Mexican in Los Angeles is all Seagal needs, and he knows exactly where to find him. After putting on a different front license plate, Seagal heads out to the club, but they want nothing to do with a washed up action star. So why don't you just get the f out of here? But Seagal offers the bouncer this entire movie's budget. I'll give five bucks if you can let me in. So he lets him in out of pity. The first guy he meets tells him he's a huge fan, so Seagal throws him down the fucking stairs. Then he spots Johnny 23 and tells him, while 23's a good start, those are fucking rookie numbers, and then tells him the coldest shit you'll ever hear. I look at you, I see a man like me. Now that he's ruined everyone's night, he can leave. <coughs> The bouncer asks how his night went, so Seagal kicks him in the nuts and gives him a concussion. <laughs> then he realizes he totally spaced that he was holding a sandwich when the director said action, so he tries to play it off by giving it to the script supervisor. Sandwich, nice to meet you. Come, come back and see me some Not a fucking chance. He's back home, and while his landlady is telling him how awesome he is, and someone taught you how to fight like that. And how about she wants to bang him? I really respect you. All he can think about is how he really regrets giving away that sandwich. And you kind of remember the unthinkable has actually happened. He pretends like he's talking about his son, but she ain't buying it. <laughs> Whatever. The next day, Seagal's minding his own business when these guys just start unloading on him. But it's not his first rodeo, so after getting out and taking off the front license plate, he reverses the f out of there. But they're right behind him, raining down a bullshit amount of bullets. But Seagal is more concerned with where the f that smell is coming from. Seriously though, what the f? It's gotta be that front license plate, so he puts it back on. But that was the wrong one, motherfucker. So he switches it out again, and that is so much better. Now that that's taken care of, he takes out these poor sons of bitches by going Seagal squared. He starts off by yanking the wheel to the left, which causes the vehicle to spin right. He then combines not looking where he's driving to his already top tier not looking where he's shooting. Not able to handle all the stupidity, the town car does the honorable thing and commits suicide out of embarrassment. Seagal forgets they were the ones chasing him and out of pure habit, kicks them in the nuts, jacks their wallets, and hauls ass out of there. Now we're back with him, and he runs into these guys who offer to give him a ride, but he turns them down. But they know he's just being modest, so they insist. <laughs> Things start to get heated. <laughs> huh? Huh? When Seagal just happens to be driving down this random alley. Keep moving, white boy! Look, motherfucker, Seagal's half black sometimes, so say goodbye to your nuts. <laughs> Now that they're all dead, Seagal takes the license plate from their truck and puts it onto his car. Seagal tells him he wants some answers. Did your brother kill my son? But all he can think about is how fucking weird this license plate shit is and how he can't be a part of it. But Seagal will only let him leave if he changes the plates back. Now Seagal's back home, where his landlady is threatening to evict him if he doesn't bang her. You have to give me something. When Griffin's gang busts in from out of nowhere, but Seagal's reflexes are legendary, and he easily takes out this guy. <laughs> this guy. This guy. This guy. This guy again. 
and this guy. And while he's at it, fuck his neighbor too. This has officially turned into a rampage. And after taking out a passing motorist, and no look shooting into a random pedestrian, He's not done chasing that dragon and sneaks up behind this poor son of a bitch. Seagal is loving all this killing so much, he forgets people are after him, which gives Eddie Griffin an easy shot into his body double's shoulder. So Seagal says, fuck that, this is dangerous, and leaves her to fend for herself. So she cries and misses a lot which fools the bad guys into thinking Seagal's still there. The next day, the bullet wound is completely healed, so Seagal breaks into this house and desperately searches for license plates. But instead, all he finds is his son's murder weapon. Then we learn the mind-blowing truth of who killed Seagal's son. I saw it all happen. But nobody fucking cares, and it was probably Seagal anyways. Now Seagal is getting ready for a final showdown when she warns him to be careful because she saw Meteor Man, and Eddie Griffin is the most terrible actor she's ever seen. No, I'm a lot fucking worse. So Seagal chokes her cousin to death. Go, that's my cousin Winston. Simon, Simon, stop. And then heads out. Griffin's gang is expanding into the cutthroat world of muffin bakeries and is selling some top of the line ingredients. That's fucking baking soda, bitch! Fuck yeah, it is. Seagal shows up and, after switching license plates with the buyer, does what he does best murder the fuck out of everyone. When he starts getting numb to the thrill of killing, Seagal pushes himself to his limits and puts all his creativity on display by kicking this guy in the nuts. 11 fucking times. Now it's down to just Seagal and undercover brother, the guy who ordered the hit on Seagal's son and on Seagal himself twice and shot him in the fucking shoulder. But Seagal really likes the cut of his jib. I got no beef with you. So they're cool now, and this entire movie was a waste of everyone's fucking time. Tonight's gonna be murder.